Were you like were you like a book kid? Yeah, yeah. I like, fell off recently, but I, I really was a book kid. Like the like getting in trouble for reading in class, like book kid. Or like would rush through tests to, I mean, like, because you knew you would get to be able to read silently afterwards. <laughs> I was more like I'd stay up in like the late night we I did that hours of the morning. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I, I was that brand. I did a whole hell of a lot of that. Um I ask because ooh, whoopsies, that's not what I meant to do. Yeah, okay. I ask, um because I've been trying to get back in touch with my book kid roots and like mm-hmm. read more. And I have I have found myself ensnared by another one of those book series that has like the kind of lore that people literally dedicate their entire lives to and here I'll I'll tell you what it is in a second but I just I just want to see if anyone cuz I know there's definitely people out there that only need to see what this is and they'll just be like yep so does this mean anything to you No Okay so I've started reading the Dune series by Frank Herbert And it's, like, it's the kind of sci-fi that, like, there's, like, you know, a map and, like, a dictionary in the back and, like, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I think there's, like, maybe, like, seven books in the series, and I just started reading the first one, and I'm obsessed. So, I have, I've become just so much more insufferably nerdy, like, overnight. Well, I have, like, my books here as well. I, um... I'm starting grad school next fall for film and TV, as I think I mentioned on here, but I'm trying to uh, both watch and read up on my films, so... A king. An absolute king. Yes. And what else do I have here? Um... It's funny, though. I always go on, like, the Roger Ebert website to, like, Mm -hmm. reviews, and sometimes it's to, like, old movies, so, like, he will be the one who've actually written like wrote the review yes. just like people that work for the website now yeah and it's funny because like one of my favorite movies is a clockwork orange and i have a poster like right on the wall up there <laughs> i went on the... expecting like you know it to be like four or five stars and he was just like this sucks <laughs> i was like okay sorry sir that's always like you know when you have an idol and they don't agree with you on something and it's like it wounds you yeah, but, and, like, right, I get gonna, it, gonna, like, not every single critic likes every movie, so, like, it's fine, mm-hmm. but I also just think it's funny, like, when I go on there and I read these reviews of, like, movies that have won, like, Oscars and awards and, like, have been considered, like, culturally significant for so long, and here's the guy who didn't like it when it came out. <laughs> so that was interesting, but... Yeah, I, am. Um... I can feel myself, like, ready to sell my soul to this universe. How many uh, books are in the series? Like, seven. Seven. Time to go nuts. Wow, that's like a whole Harry Potter right there. Yeah, except, you know, hopefully less written by... I don't actually know much about (laughs) but... Hopefully written by a better person. Yeah, I'm gonna Google him later. (laughs) And hope that I don't find anything too unsavory. So yeah. Hopefully he's not trending on Twitter tomorrow. I'm pretty sure he's dead, so. Oh. Uh, Maybe maybe they're gonna uncover something. This is, this is a fair point. Little, little nasty tidbits. But also I know that they're, like, there was like a, there was a movie version of this, which by the way, directed by David Lynch. Um, which, like, (laughs) kind of sucked, but also didn't. Because, like... Maybe reading the series will give you more insight. I haven't watched it yet, but also I know, like, this shit is is dense. Like, there's so much going on. Like, any attempt to make it into a movie, that's really ambitious. But I know that they're remaking it. Like, it's coming out in 2021 with, like... Zendaya, Timothy Chalamet, like, Jason Momoa, Mm -hmm. Oscar Isaac, and I saw the trailer, and I gotta say, man, it does look like it's gonna slap. 
and I know that it's coming out in like October of 2021. Mm-hmm. So I swear, if that's not the, time. if that's not the first movie that I'm able to see in a theater again, I'm gonna lose it. Like I, I don't care how like like stupidly expensive movie tickets are. Like it's ridiculous, but I want to go see this like in those maybe they'll be cheaper because. 4K because of IMAX COVID. surround sound. Oh, uh, that, that's gonna be expensive anyway. You flip it. But that's pretty adventurous of you, too. You said it's a, a dense read after being on your reading hiatus <laughs> to pick up that. Well, I ch- actually, the funny thing is that um, when I was like, when I was a freshman in high school, so I was like 14, mm-hmm. my English teacher was like, hey, this book is a lot. Like, it's, it's not necessarily an easy read. Well, I mean, it is now that I've hit my stride with it, but, like, I should not. Like, what was I thinking? I was 14. I was an idiot. Mm-hmm. Like, but he, re- like, re- gave me a copy. He was like, try this. You might like it, but you might have a really hard time with it. And I, like, got, like, a couple dozen pages in, and I handed it back to him. I was just like, I, no. <laughs> like, sorry. Brain this, don't work. This Here seems, you go. <laughs> this seems real cool, but, like. No. Nah. Is it is it dense in the sense that like I find it uh, like universe books to be a lot to take in if there's like a lot of characters like yeah. being introduced at once. Okay, that that's like, like if I have to flip back to like the directory every like, like other page. George R R Martin has definitely read this and like mm-hmm. taken cues from it. You know, because <laughs> this was written in like 1965, I think. So like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's a lot. But like now, however many years later, and like having tried to like read things like freaking War and Peace, which I got eight hundred or so pages into, and like you know just reading a bunch of other like books of different genres and like older books, I'm like okay, let's let's give this another shot because it did seem cool and like you know it's topical again. Oh my god, I love it! Like I feel like i like reading like i used to like wake up and be like okay what is the soonest point in the day that i can just sit down and read uninterrupted it feels so good to feel like that again good good that's a great feeling so that's what's going on with me um i'd be reading books and that's honestly it (laughs) nice nice love to hear that do you do much do you read a lot of like sci-fi i I think it's really funny that you and I are the exact same level of nerdy. Just, like, completely, like, just two brands I, that never overlap. I do like sci-fi, but it depends. Like, I'm picky about it. Okay, that's I fair. like more so, like, fantasy-type books if we're going in, like, not unrealistic realms because sci-fi has many truths behind it, but just not discovered yet. Yeah. So, like, um, so did you enjoy reading Game of Thrones, essentially, is what I'm, like... I did not read Ga- Game of Thrones. Okay, fair enough. Um... But I feel like I would. Okay. I just never got into that series. That's fair. Yeah, like, I s- we are the exact same level of just, like, nerdy, dorky, geeky, just just two different brands where there's so very little overlap... Because I'll be like, have you read this? Have you listened to this audio drama? Have you watched this weird artsy movie? And you're like, nope. And then you turn to me and you're like, have you read this comic book? I'm like, don't know what you're talking about, bud. Yeah. Yeah, but we we fill each other in, I feel like. And between the two of us. Yeah, we each give the other person, like, an (laughs) excuse to info dump about, like, whatever nerdy shit they know way too much about. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. But yes, hopefully. Although I will say, well, we'll like, one of, one of my. We start doing the Twin Peaks streams, but please continue. Yes, I'm excited. Yeah, no. Um, I was, I was gonna say maybe June. I feel like that might be the the yeah. time. Sometime okay, so in June. Keep a lookout for that, people. Still don't know the exact date, but probably June. <laughs> so probably June. I like that. That remind me of that meme or tweet whatever it's like during the summer like oh what's the date i don't know probably july that's like no one ever knows 
That is if you're not in school or yeah. have a job where you're writing the date, like summer is July. A kid. Who knows? Whatever. Like, who knows, man? I I would get so anxious. Like June, I was like, all right, we're good. We have the whole summer. Yeah, we are golden. July, all right. We still have like, you know, a lot of summer. Once once the J months stop August and it goes stressed into that, me out as a child. A month. Mm-mm. And the S month. The worst thing about August as a kid, <laughs> the worst thing about summer as a kid was when you had, like, something that you were really looking forward to in August. Like, if, like say you were, like, taking, like, a big family trip, but it was, like, in August. Because it'd be, like, yeah. it it would feel like you were, like, wasting the summer waiting for this trip, big event. But the but big event was August. at the end of the summer. And then, like, as soon as it... As soon as it was over, it was like, oh, shit, it's almost September. <laughs> I was a very stressed out child. How did no one know that I had anxiety? <laughs> oh, man. Um, then college is, like, the opposite. I'm, like, counting down the, the minutes until I could go back to school. Yep, it really like, does. When do I get to be unsupervised again? Yes. And now I'm just kind of, like, I, I feel like it should, like, pandemic time, part of it should have felt like, kind of like summer, like, uh, like, back when it was still fun a little bit in the beginning, when everyone was, like, making, like, whipped coffee and all that shit. Yeah. Tiger King quarantine, essentially. That had a Mm -hmm. feel of summer to it that I kind of enjoyed. It was, like, uncharted territory. Everyone was, like what do we do with ourselves? Like, even if you had a job or you were in school, you were, like, well, now what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, okay, no rules anymore, I guess. But now it's like, I'm so hyper aware of like every minute passing that I'm not doing something productive. Well, I mean, you're reading and you're filling your time with very creative and mind activities where. You're thinking, so I feel like here's the thing: you're using right, your time, <laughs> but it's not making money for our capitalist overlords, and therefore I feel bad about it, even though I shouldn't. I see your point. That should be a new. Um, there should be two new uh, squares on the bingo card. Bridget brings up David Lynch, or we somehow wind up <laughs> talking about capitalism. Wow, you're pretty in the same breath almost. <laughs> Pretty much. Also, um, everyone getting to, or at least all the people who actually watch this on YouTube getting to enjoy how ridiculously messy my hair is, unless it is 100% dry. Like, it's ridiculous. It looks, looks good. I can't tell. But I get in this weird thing where it's like the front, like the part that dries first, like gets all like, you know, fluffy and curly and like, okay, cute. And then I still have this like, damp like still slicked back Ugh, I hate <laughs> it looks really your weird hair, I hate when your hair is in between like wet and dry and it's like I hate it so like, much and here I am um putting damp. myself on camera <laughs> oops oh well that's what happens when you get all disgusting on a bike ride in the middle of the day it happens it, it do be happening sometimes all right I think we've I think we've rambled long enough for today let's hmm. uh Let's dive right in. First one we've got. I came up with this the other night. Wait, I'm sorry. We didn't dive right in. We literally, like, dipped our toe, and then we took it out and thought about it, had a conversation, <laughs> and then, like, thought about it again, put the whole foot. Okay. Me trying to get into the pool. At we never dive again. right in. Because the water is anyway. freezing. Um, I thought I came up with this one the other night at dinner. Because we made sandwiches and we had potato chips. So, um, what is the best... What what do we think are the best kind of potato chips? And we got two categories. Like, the style of the chip. Mm -hmm. And also, like, flavor. Uh... I think, um, baked chips. Like, baked potato chips. Not a fan. Oh, I thought you were going to say you were a fan. Ew, no. Disgusting. I I like... Kettle. Kettle cooked chips. chips are the best. I feel 
I feel empty when I eat them. Same. Like, oh my god. Because I don't always have them, and they're usually a little bit more expensive. So when I do have them, I'm like, ooh. Yeah, it makes me feel a little bougie. But like the <laughs> what's the brand? It's like the Cape Cod oh, they, potato they, chips, they, like the kettle cooked chips. Oh my god, I love them so much. They're so good. Those are good. I like I like the kettle brand. I don't know if we have that around here. It might be it's regional. It's kettle. I have no idea. I have Maybe. not seen it that I recall, um, but also I don't always pay attention, so Wait, just if you Google kettle chips, it's like I, I don't know how to describe it other than the font. You've definitely seen them. It's just kettle. Oh I know you're like mm -hmm. you usually get those like you know sometimes when you like buy a sub and they give you the little baggie of potato chips? Yeah. That's mm -hmm. that's what that is. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, I know what I know what we're talking about, but yeah, no. Um, kettle cooked chips are superior. I do yes. not like. I th I don't like the ruffle potato chips. Uh, I There's sometimes about when them I find unsatisfying, but I can't exactly I don't, put my finger on it. I don't not like them, but they're not my first. I'm not a big chip person, like. But when I do eat them, I yeah. like kettle chips. Um. So yeah, it's not my go-to snack, but that is my go-to chip. Yeah, like, but... I would put myself in that same category. So we got style covered. What about, like, flavors? I am kind of basic. Mm -hmm. I do enjoy just a good, plain potato chip. Good, plain kettle chip. Um... Barbecue is acceptable. I feel like you're gonna hate me for my answer. Do tell. Salt and vinegar. It's just pain. It's so I love it's vinegar just pain. things. I love vinegar. No, oh, do you put it on fries? No, I actually don't do that, but I I just like I I guess I'm just thinking of like vinegar based things in general and it's like the taste i'll allow it For um me. besides that barbecue's good um i like wait no the, i'm i'm thinking of like tostitos now i'm like i love the lime flavored ones with oh my god i chips. love the lime flavored tostitos they're, they're so, so much good. those are superior now, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm forgetting flavors that I like. We really don't I mean, buy a lot of flavored really chips in my house. Much that I knock out of my cabinet. But there's also, like, I wouldn't really eat them hmm. yeah. as well. That's fair. They have lime-flavored potato chips, too. Okay, that doesn't seem right to me. Like... With, like, tortilla chips, I get it, because, mm -hmm. like, you know. <gasps> Sorry, I'm Googling potato <laughs> chips now. In my I mind, love... like, that kind of flavor just matches, because you, sh you usually put things like lime in, like, guac or salsa. Mm -hmm. I don't they know. have pickle-flavored potato chips. I love pickles. Me, because I like vinegar. Yeah, those, those do seem like they could possibly be linked. Your cousins. <laughs> So are you the pickle friend? Yes. Oh yeah. I ate a pickle before I came here. <laughs> but you're the friend that everyone gives their like pickle spear to at the restaurant? Yes. No, I'm the friend who like steals the I, I don't even like <laughs> You don't ask. even ask, I, you don't like, wait, just... <laughs> you just take it. <laughs> no, I, I'm polite, but like if I know they're gonna give it to me, I just take it. Like I we've been down this road, like give me your pickle. <laughs> Give me your pickles. <laughs> What's the the episode of SpongeBob? I'm here for your pickle. Oh. <laughs> or the episode where he's hiding them under his tongue. Oh my god. That's me. It all comes back to SpongeBob. As it as it should. As it should. The root of everything. That and probably like 
What's another really long-running TV show? Seinfeld? Like, if it didn't happen in an episode of Seinfeld, like, is it real? Yeah. Who's to say? As one or one of two origins. Yep. SpongeBob or Seinfeld. I feel like I'm making myself. The... They have cappuccino flavored Lay's. That oh, sounds. Fuck. I love coffee, but I don't know, man. Now we're just playing God. Wait, was Lay's the company that like? They had that promotion yes. event, like, oh, create your plate. Create no the wonder they're all doing these fucking, weird like, toothpaste flavors. and orange juice. Oh, God. Which, like, hilarious, but also terrible. This is fascinating. I recommend all of you to just Google potato chip flavors. They're all Lay's. They're all so weird. Peanut butter and jelly. Ew. So no, <laughs> these cannot all be real. These have to be hey, some of the these like, must be fake. fucked up submissions that people <gasps> ketchup. Oh my god, I hope that one's real. I'll buy those ketchup flavored. Okay. Mm-mm. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> Nasty. Are they real? What's the verdict? I mean, let me look it up. I need to fact check this for for fact all my ketchup lovers out there. <laughs> ketchup chip. One's gotta make it. The other ketchup girl. I, I gotta real. have her on the podcast sometime. You two would bond. Who? Um, family friend. Her name's Abby. Who? The other ketchup girl I know. Oh. Uh, you know, my sister... My older sister, she's a big ketchup fan, too. Her AirPods case is a Heinz ketchup bottle. I love it. <laughs> she's worse than me, though. She... Actually, no, I've gotten pretty bad with the ketchup. Disgusting. Or good, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, ketchup-flavored potato chips are real. Wow. You are welcome. Gross. Although, speaking of condiments, I think... I think we're gonna hop forward a little in our question order today. What is the correct way to put the condiments on your fries? Like, in a little, little, little puddle on the side? Or just all over? So, I do both. Okay. This, this comes from me being a ketchup lover. So that makes it, like, a true, true diehard ketchup lover i i don't know i like to cascade it all over my fries and see my artwork then i pick them up i'm like oh it's so naked and then i dip it in like a huge pile that i also create um see i don't so have basically the... like if you go first finish oh uh, i was gonna say basically if i see any fry that's not covered in ketchup like any portion of the fry um, except, no, not, I'm not that bad, but, like, most of it is doused in ketchup. Uh, okay, so I've been roasted for this before. I put mustard on my french fries. I think you told me that, but my mind, like, rejected it because it's so horrifying. So I was, that's, that's Okay. Sick. Rude. <laughs> um, but yeah, I put mustard on my french fries, and if you don't like that, not my problem. So, I don't have the privilege- I have a problem. Okay, well, you can't come beat my ass about it. You're in Long Island. On Long Island. Sorry. Thank you. Um, I don't have the privilege of, like, knowing that most people, like, are gonna be fine with it. If I'm, like, if I'm, like, out with my friends and someone, like, you know, we're all getting lunch or something and someone tries to grab a fry, I- I have to be a little, like, pool of sauce on the side person- because if I put mustard all over my french fries, um, everyone else at the table is going to get mad. I, you know, although I don't agree with it, I think you should be able to do what you want, even if it looks repulsive. I mean, if this is an everyone got fries with their meal type situation, mm -hmm. yeah, spread that shit all over. Oh, but if it's like a communal fry. Yeah. 
I understand. Or that. like if I'm the or like if everyone else ordered something that didn't come with fries, and I know that mm-hmm. like you know my friends are gonna be like, "Can I cop a fry?" Because you know I'm willing to share. I think of myself as a nice person. So yeah. All right, that makes sense. Very generous of you. Thank you. I try. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's not wrong to put mustard on your fries. In what, fact, mu- it you is just good. put regular mustard, not like honey mustard, right? I mean, I do like honey mustard. Like, if I get it with, like, my, yeah. my chicky tendies. <laughs> that also, I also dip dip my fries in the little the little sauce they give you, like, when you mm-hmm. buy chicken nuggets. Um, but, yeah, also just, you know. Do you like ice cream and fries? I'm thinking of McDonald's here. You dip your fries in ice cream um, if I you were to it. get old. I am not particularly in love with it. But, like, if I happen... To, like, have fries and a milkshake? Yeah, I'll probably dip one or two in there just cause. Just cause. Just, you know. Why not? Why not? Yeah, essentially. What's something that, like, even by your standards, I guess we're talking all about food yet again, but oh Once well. Again, I, I don't think care. I have been really good about, like... We've had a we had a good run where we didn't really mention too much. So I think now watch us watch us go back and review all of them and like <laughs> we slip in food every time. I no, think we learned um, this. Continue. What's something that's even disgusting by your standards? Like you look at it and you're like, I know that's gross, but I still do it. Like eating wise or like mixing foods together. I can't remember if I mentioned this in the past, but I'm gonna mention it again. But before I do, is there anything that comes to mind? Nothing is springing to mind except that, like, I. My mom always calls me picky, which I think is bullshit because I will try a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean I'm gonna like everything. You just and, don't commit to the whole, the whole um, dish. You know, when I was studying abroad, I was like, I had never tried like lamb or like veal before and i was out there like i got like a lamb kebab she was delicious and i texted my mom she's like ew that's gross or like i texted her a picture of like i had like some smoked salmon on like rye bread and i texted her that she was like sending me like the puke emoji i was like (laughs) and you call me picky (laughs) so i don't know i know i have uh foods that i'm made fun of for eating in my house but maybe when you give me your answer to this one, I'll like it'll think of something, or like it'll I, it'll jog my memory. I put yogurt on bread. What the fuck? <laughs> so good. Okay, first That's of all, what, yogurt is nasty. On bread. No, it's good. Ugh. I don't eat it as much. Now I'm trying to eat, like, the Greek plain yogurt because that's the healthiest one and tastes like garbage. But, like, because yogurt, like, the sweet ones are, like, loaded with sugar and even even the greek yogurt ones which are supposed to be healthier nope um yeah so good and i do applesauce and bread really good god you're like my dad why does he does he make my dad is really picky he won't put like normal condiments on fries like no like you know no ketchup mustard barbecue sauce none of that but when he was a kid he used to dip his fries in applesauce Sir? Huh. I, I'm just thinking of a situation where I would have the two of those at the same time. I have no idea. Like, I don't think that moment has happened. Nope. I don't think I do anything like that. I I'm mean, if to I think do, if... I'm not thinking of it. If there are any, uh, I'm sure there are. I mean, I feel I sometimes I substitute the bread in for waffles, but I don't always have waffles on hand. <laughs> this is just so offensive to me because yogurt, like the texture, it doesn't matter what it tastes like. It's good. The texture offends me. Mm-mm, it's good. I find the textures of texture of bananas offensive. I like a good banana. I don't know if I do anything like that. I'm sure there's other things I do. 
I know. Half the time I'll be looking up at dinner and my mom's just giving me like disgusted faces as to like how I'm <laughs> eating my meal. So I mean, okay, everyone acts like mustard on fries is like the most offensive food crime they've no, ever seen. It's not. I can I can understand it. I just think the fact that you're not putting you, your lack of ketchup use is what is really getting me. It's not we the fact you're using mustard on tomatoes. They are the devil's fruit. I know. Fruit. I know how you feel. I don't get it, but yeah, I don't know. I get like the only thing that's coming to mind is just me like my willingness to eat things that people might consider like weird if they haven't really like encountered them before mm -hmm. that's but like that shows you're adventurous like you're willing to try new things like a true picky eater does not deter from like they're like i don't know five foods that they eat yeah like i don't know why my mom calls me picky because i'm like i'm the only in my family that eats like sushi even like a california roll that's, like, not not anything. Yeah, there's nothing crazy, but, like, no one else in my yeah. family will eat it. So. Would they even eat, like, a veggie roll? Like, so there's, like, just no fish on there? I mean, my mom probably has at some point, but, like, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes she'll, like, buy me some, like, you know, just some supermarket, like, California roll, vegetable roll sushi, just as a little, like, you know, slightly nicer, quick lunch. And, like, I'll offer her one, because sometimes it's, like, more than, like, one person eats in, like, a sitting of sushi, mm -hmm. like, in the package. Yeah. And so she's always like, no. I'm like, the craziest okay. thing in here is avocado. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it was. I don't know what it is. I was, like, I, when I was studying abroad, I'd be sending her, like, pictures of all these, like, you know, Russian foods I was trying, and she'd just be like, Ew. and then I'd be like, and then in the same breath, she would call me picky. I'm like, mm -mm. pot kettle. Are we sure about that? So, yeah. How do we get here? <laughs> uh, all I can think of is ketchup. Uh, oh, oh, I was talking about ketchup potato chips. I knew there was a link. Yeah, okay. <laughs> cool. Good to know. Do we have any other uh, food opinions that we want to shoehorn in here real quick, or, or should we move on? I will say I would not put ketchup on potato chips. I, that's just wrong. The ketchup girl I am thinking of has 100% done that in my presence. No, but ketchup flavored potato chips, that's a different story. Anyway, that that's my thought. Oh, you know what they have in Russia and some other Slavic countries? They have cucumber flavored Sprite. I don't like cucumbers. I, I don't mind cucumbers. I don't, try it. I don't think they really taste like much. I would feel like that would taste more like, I don't know flavored sparkling water yeah i don't know i never ran into that i did find pear flavored fanta <gasps> i love i love pear flavored things which was really good i don't think i've tried that i know i've had pear flavored drinks not that one yeah that was really good i just remembered that i went to the like eastern european market in the next town over like two days ago and i have a huge bottle of this, there's a soft drink called baikal and i have no i have no words to describe the flavor like even one of my friends who's like a native like a native siberian he's like i'll never forget him saying it in his in his russian accent he's like yeah we don't know what is the taste but we just know this is Baikal <laughs> and like yeah no idea what it is but it's good and I just remembered I have a huge bottle of that in the basement fridge 
and I'm really nice. excited now. Nice. Also, shout out to the man at that market who clocked that I was clearly not a native Russian speaker and, like, said the total slow enough for me to understand. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Anyway, shall we move on? Yeah. All right. So, next in the actual order of questions listed, would you rather win $60,000 at age 20 or $1 million at age 60? Now, I know why someone would say choice A, like, oh, yeah, like, that's my startup. That's how, that's the beginning of it all. But knowing me, I don't think I'd put that money to good use. So I'll take a million at a a later date. Thank you. I was going to say option A for literally that exact reason. Like, I need to get started, fam. But like sixty thousand, that's like that's like a starting salary for some. That's that's like I mean, just it a is, year of but work. But also, I could like get an apartment. Yeah, I mean, is... I I understand. Like, you know, you need it now because as a young person, because I'm still living in my childhood you bedroom, tend not to have funds. I, I'm hello. <laughs> But, uh, audio listeners, we're stuck in our parents' houses. Yeah. No, no change. This is where we've been all along. Um, no, I'll take a million. No, I don't think, I don't think I would do it. I think I would definitely. Hopefully by age 60, that million will join my other millions I have, but. (laughs) Making it rain. Um, yeah, no, uh. Right now, in my, especially, like, in my current situation, if I, like, you know, just, like, kind of being stuck here, like, yeah, give me, like, give me the money now. I, I, Mm -hmm. I need, I feel like I'm in this place in my life where I just, like, if I could just, like, have, like, one thing, like, if, if I just got one lucky break, like, everything else would fall into place. Mm-hmm. And like that, like having that's it money that would be it, or like that would be the kind of thing I would need to just like actually start getting the entire rest of my life together. So mm-hmm. um, yes, please. At least from where I currently sit at age twenty three. That's valid. I I understand the reasoning why, mm-hmm. but I don't know. I'd prefer to wait. Yeah. Fair point. All right. Now we're when I first read that question, I thought it was like sixty thousand every like few years or a million. So it's like adding up to the be the same amount. Mm -hmm. So like a little at a time or just all at once. In that case, like um, I'll take a little at a time. Yeah. That'd be ideal. Like, all be, right, great. That'd be pretty fantastic, honestly. I can quit my jobs. Huh. I wish I could get a job. That'd be nice. You want one of mine? Yeah, sure. There's an opening. <laughs> just, just, just drive four hours every day. It's something to do. Um. <laughs> anyway. Pass the time. Now we're now that we're not talking about food, we're blowing through questions, which I think that says something. Yeah, that says something about us as people. Um. So, if Cinderella's glass slipper fit perfectly, why did it fall off? That's a question that makes me angry. Not and angry, also, but also, if everything else she was wearing. Like, when the clock strikes midnight, it all turns back. Like, you know, the carriage becomes a pumpkin again. Like, the the footmen become, you know, woodland creatures. Her dress, no longer pretty. Why did the slipper? Why did the the one? Why did the one that fell off? Why did it remain? 
I think because she wasn't she barefoot when she was having all her previously items that were previously something else they turned into something but i'm pretty sure she was barefoot and the fairy godmother was like boop here's some shoes so she created it out of nothing so maybe that's why they remained but only one i'm good like, no she, she no she, um she loses she... one shoe uh-huh Mm. Wait no! Oh my God, you're right. She oh, has the other. She does have the other because that's how she, in the Disney version, like which is what I'm thinking of. That's how she proves mm -hmm. the, the first one breaks. Yeah, she <gasps> pulls it out. She's like, oh, you're mm. right. So why did? The... Wait, let me. I'm gonna do another fact check. Why did they stay? Cinderella before transformation. <laughs> All right. Let me see if she has shoes on. We're going by the Disney animated version. This is our... Oh, crap. She does have shoes on. Yeah, Hold because on. she made the, like, the other dress that like all the all the mice made. Well, the I, thought she was, I thought she was barefoot, but it looks like she had shoes on. Yeah, so why did the glass slippers stay? Mm -hmm. Like, that's what I'm more concerned maybe, about now. Maybe because the prince touched them and, like, an external force of nature, like, interfered with the magic... <laughs> <laughs> that's my only guess but he didn't touch to both why. of them like why didn't it turn back into her ugly shoes yeah I don't, this is so dumb her but like, plain chain footwear yeah she's definitely wearing shoes beforehand oh I never that also makes me mad but to answering uh, the first question... I haven't watched the Disney anime um, in a very long time. Please continue. I know. I had to, like... I had to do some Googling. Look it up, because I wasn't... Yeah, I had to do some extensive research. Uh, <laughs> but I think it fell off, because, like, okay, everything per fit her perfectly, because it was custom-made for her by her fairy godmother. Even if something fits you perfectly, like you're able to remove it like whether it be a shoe that's like my perfect size or like the dress like okay yeah point taken. you know she it was she, she was hustling, hustling down the stairs okay so we've solved that to one be. but we have not solved why they still exist after midnight i know which that's i don't, an even I don't greater think question will. that's a that's a much bigger question in my in my mind let me no now I'm doing so much research today. Wait, I'm <laughs> I did. I've got someone looked it up. Yeah, maybe there's like an explanation, like the like original original fairy tale, not the Disney version. Shoe not turned back. Why did her? Sh All right, hold on. I'm so invested. Okay, no, this is what I'm saying. But this isn't the case. Cinderella thanks her fairy godmother for letting her keep them in the live... Okay, this is going off the live-action film now. Uh, it's heavily implied that the reason the glass slippers didn't disappear was because they were pure magic and did not derive from an already existing object. But no, what about in Disney? Oh, okay. I don't think they're bothering with that in Disney. We're like doing too much research and they're like, it ain't that deep. Yeah, they're just like, nah, we just wanted to, to make some pretty animation. Next question, please. Okay, everyone's saying it's designed from nothing, which is what I thought, but you know what? Hmm. Wait, hold I on. I don't know. Hold on. Hold on. I'm thinking of the scene where, in the Disney version, where she encounters the fairy godmother, and she has her, like, pink dress that the mice made, that they're, it's all ripped No, I, she listen, might not I be just, I just looked scene. up, I saw the transformation with my eyes, she was wearing footwear. God damn it, okay. I know, I'm, I, I'm out of ideas, I am out I of zoomed ideas. I zoomed in, I saw... <laughs> I don't I know. All my research. I simply do not know. Let's go on this Reddit. Maybe they have the answers, as do many redditors. That's like where you go when you're looking for like I a know. real answer, 
or like some kind of crazy film theory, that's where you look. <laughs> Everyone's like, damn, the fairy godmother, like, she could have just created everything out of thin air. Nothing could have disappeared. <laughs> I wonder if there's an explanation, like... They did her dirty. The OG fairy not... tale, but I don't... If I were... If you were Cinderella, and you could keep one thing that there was a transformation of, like, what would you keep? Like, would you pick the shoes? Would you pick... I don't know. Well, I mean, here's the thing. I'd pick the dress, but, like, in her situation, the shoe is more advantageous because the prince mm. is out there trying to match it. Mm-hmm. Who is who is this fair maiden who is wearing these shoes? So, I don't know. Interesting. Getting getting deep over fairy tales here. I know. Anyway, taking a hard left turn into our final question of the evening. So if. A doctor suddenly had a heart attack while performing surgery. <laughs> Would the other doctors work on the doctor or the patient? This is like a few episodes back. This was the um, ambulance question. Like, oh, oh would yeah, they yeah. pull over? I think about that all the time. And I'm still waiting for my response. I, I've contacted a good source, but he's EMTs, currently Please let us busy. know. Yes. No, yeah, someone let us know, but, um, all right. Now I'm going back to every, like, ER television show I've watched, so, like, who? I'm thinking it would also depend (laughs) Um, on, like, what's going on. Yeah, what kind of surgeons are, okay. Like, it's not like every doctor is experienced in doing every surgery. Yeah. And I I believe there's always, like, a lead doctor. I'm pretty sure, like, all the other doctors. Well, it depends what type of surgery, too. Like, if it's just a one-doctor surgery, then then clearly that doctor wouldn't continue doing the surgery. I'm sure they have people on call, like, hey... You know, you need to get to the OR right this second to finish up this surgery. And I'm sure someone else would then operate on I don't think, the like, fallen there's doctor. definitely no situation where, like, a doctor is working, like, completely alone alone. Like, there's always, like... No, there's always, like, text. technicians and, like... But there might not be people qualified to continue the surgery. Like, oh, if they're yeah, specialists, okay, well, if they're a specialist and, like... Mm-hmm. I, I've picked up a few things from working in a hospital. If okay, there's like good. a we specialist, love to hear it. <laughs> I, actually, I actually have uh, the answer to this. Call, well, what I think is the answer. All right. Um, like if they're a specialist, then you know there's not many around. Then mm-hmm. they'd have to hold off until someone who's capable to finish that surgery could come in and do it. Um, and it depends, like, is, is this an elective surgery? Is it, uh, like, an urgent surgery where they're going to die if they it doesn't get completed? So, mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like there's just many factors. I'm also thinking about, like, how long you can kind of be, like, kept in, like, that kind of, like, st- the word that's coming to my mind is definitely not the correct one, but, like, the like, stasis. Mm-hmm. Cause, like, yeah, like how long you could be kept under like anesthesia or whatever i'm sure there's limits because well i don't know there are also long surgeries but there are also different types of anesthesia emergency happens like can they just keep you like if it's like an emergency but like there's you know in the same city, okay. there's another doctor that's, like, on call. Like, you know, maybe they could just keep you there for another 20 minutes? Rather I'm than, sure, like... I'm sure there's a lot You know, if it's something of... crazy hyper-specific where there's, like, one doctor per for, like, a couple cities. Yeah, I'm sure they always have, like, if need be, depending on the surgery and yeah. how risky it is. Like, if it's a high-risk surgery... I'm sure they have, like, you know, either 
other doctors working alongside or someone on call. Mm. Um, but if it's maybe an easier procedure, then, well, if it's also easier, then maybe more people can do it. I don't yeah, know. I don't know. These are great questions. I'm just, but I'm to, fascinated to as answer, to how exactly this would be handled. Yeah, to answer the question briefly, mm-hmm. if a doctor is working on a patient and the doctor has a heart attack, I am. Sh- there's no way then they would continue doing the surgery. Someone else would probably take over, or perhaps it depends where they are in the mm-hmm. surgery. Um, maybe it's a case where they can like wake the patient up quickly and c- have them consent because consent goes into that too. And yeah. They can consent to another surgeon finishing the surgery. And then someone else can go help the doctor. Okay, yeah. I mean, as a person who has absolutely no experience um, working anywhere, even remotely medical, I buy it. (laughs) Most of that spiel is based on watching ER shows. (laughs) Okay, well, you have more More information than me. (laughs) I, I don't think I've ever watched any kind of show set in a hospital like ever not even scrubs scrubs i don't watch grays though i really don't watch a lot i have never i've said this before i've never met a person that unironically watches gray's anatomy mm-hmm. like i feel like at this point if you're watching it it's just to be like all right let's see what they come up with this week yeah some kind of like 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 a like a you know can't look away type shit you know <laughs> even if you started watching unironically mm-hmm. now it's just like ah oh, where are we getting ourselves into this yeah week? interesting it's interesting that you've like picked up that much just from like being a secretary in a hospital yeah i mean <laughs> I, there's a lot that goes into it and like oh yeah I'm sure people yeah and like you know it's pretty difficult at times and I I have a newfound respect for like everyone who's in the medical field even like you know administrative workers but yeah. I'm surprised how much I picked up as well like even just medical terms or knowing what needs to be like scheduled if they're having a procedure like because especially with covid like everyone Mm -hmm. needs a covid test that's annoying but is what it is interesting yes well on that note do you have any (laughs) i mean it's not really a note it's just we've we've answered the final question so do we have any any final thoughts for today um, if anyone encounters those ketchup chips, let me know, because I'm literally about, I have to go shopping later, I'm going to be on the hunt, <laughs> or or the pickle ones, or... We set up a P.O. box just yeah, so the, people the can Captain send Maddie ones. Yes. pickle and ketchup <laughs> chips. That's, that's the fan mail I'll get, these yeah. weird-ass potato chip flavors. <laughs> Maybe someday. Maybe someday. Perhaps. I'll have a cult of, like, potato chip. My potato chip entourage. (laughs) I like it. And there'll be, like... I don't know, fights between fans over, like... (laughs) which one of us they like better or something. I don't know. I'm oh thinking of, like, gosh. with BuzzFeed Unsolved, there's, like, the people that are, like, obsessed with Shane and the people that are obsessed with Ryan. Mm-hmm. Like, Because, like, they also have the whole believer skeptic thing going on. So that's an added dimension, but, like, that's what jumps to mind. Wow. Anyway. Um, yeah. I think that's gonna gonna bring us to a close for this week's episode. Um, hopefully streaming in June... Yes, yes, very Hopefully excited we will actually for that. figure out a date for that and be able to, like, officially announce it instead of just, like, dropping 
dropping weird hints Talking and, about like, it. figuring things out live <laughs> as we record episodes. Uh, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, write that down, write that down. Literally me. <laughs> so, I guess that's it for this week. Um, everyone, stay safe. Um, yes. Get vaccinated if slash when you can. And... You know, stay hydrated, stay hydrated uh, get some sleep, which Be I nice. need to do. I've been up since 1 a.m. Oof. Yeah, that's rough. So, oh. yeah. Well, yes. Everyone take care of yourselves. Bye. Bye. This week's episode of the Fighting with Friends podcast was hosted by Bridget Kelly and Maddie Robbins. You can find other episodes of the podcast on Acast, Deezer, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Spotify, and YouTube. Follow us on Twitter at BridgetKelly98 and at MR5MAR. Rate and review us on your podcatcher of choice, like, comment, and subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Twitch, and join our Discord community using the links in the description. You can also help support us via the Acast supporter feature. Thanks for listening!